Hi everybody, welcome to this new video. Have you ever wondered how Advanced Reverser started? They didn't start breaking crazy stuff. In my case, I started solving crack maze such as the one we are going to see today. It was released in 1998 and I solved it shortly after, about 24 years ago. Leave a comment below and let me know how you started reverse engineering. This crack me is an absolute classic and very good for beginners. I will release a few videos about solving old school crack maze, but for now, let's get started. For this video, we are going to use IDA freeware. You can download it at hexrace.com and the crack me link is in the description. So basically this crack me has a file menu, a help menu with a register. And here you have a dialog where you can input your name and your serial. If you write your name, such as Hexorcist and say a one, two, three, four, five, and press okay, you get the no luck there mate, which is the bad boy message. The first thing we want to do is open the file inside of IDA. For this, we are going to drop the file inside of IDA. Drag the file over IDA and just drop it. Press OK. And now we have the actual disassembly of the crack me and you can remove the graph view by pressing space. How to locate the algorithm. Since this is a beginner crack me, I'm going to go through the most important ways. The first one being using the strings by pressing Shift F12. By pressing Shift F12, you can see the actual strings. We can see the no luck there mate and the great work mate, which I suppose is the correct message. You double click on this one. You land in the data section. Here you can see the actual string and you have cross references. Cross references are basically telling that this area has been referenced by another piece of code. Data means that this is referenced as data against code xref, which means reference as code to be executed. In order to follow the cross references, we just have to double click one of them. I'm going to double click this one. And here we can see that we have a call to message box A, which is responsible for displaying this no look there mate. Here we have a code xref, as I said just before. It means that this area is referenced by this address as code to be executed. So I will double click here to see which code is responsible for displaying this area. Here we have a call. So what we can do is rename it by pressing N and we can say display bad message. Here we have a jump. Above it, we have a conditional jump, jump if zero, which means that the result of this comparison, CMP, EEX, EBX, if it's equal, we are jumping right here. Otherwise, we display this error. So this is most likely the one responsible for displaying the correct message. Double click on it, we see good work, great work, mate. So we can press this address, press N, and we can name it display correct message. Press escape to go back. So now we understood that in order to display the correct message, EEX must be equal to EBX. Because I will say them one more time. If EEX equal EBX, the GZ is taken leading here. Now we have to understand from where EEX and EBX are coming from. EEX comes from this pop, pop EEX, and just above it we see a push EEX. We see that we have two calls. Let's go inside of it. I'm just interested by EEX at this point. So I scroll down, I see that we have move EEX EDI right here, a jump to the return. So this is returning and EEX is the return value. So this one indeed return EEX. Most likely this one is returning EBX. Let's go inside of it. And here we have move EBX EDI return. So EBX is the return value. So this function return EBX. This one return EEX. If they match, we have the correct message. So now we have to find out what those functions are doing. But before that, we see that we have a push offset string and this one has a push offset something. And then we have a call. So those two functions take one parameter. And if you enter the first one, you can see that we have arc zero. So only one parameter. And at this point, we don't really know what's going on. Let's go to the second one. And we have arc zero as well. Some computation right here. Again, ESI getting arc zero. So maybe we can try to find out where this first argument is coming from. If you want to know which part of the program is accessing this, we can press X and we can see that this is where we are right now. And there's another one 
which is right here. So I will double click on it. And here I see get dialog item text A. And interestingly enough, we have this other one right here. So I'm going to go back here, press X on this one, double click. And this one also comes from get dialog item text. This function is used to get a text from a dialog box. And we have two texts basically we have the name and the serial. This is most likely the name and the serial, but if you want to be sure, you can open the file in the resource editor and check for the ID. Here we have the actual ID, here and there. First of all, I'm going to press X. So we have 1000 and 1001. So now I'm going to switch to the resource editor. The only thing we have to do is open the file and we can look at this dialog. Here we have the dialog register, double click on it. You can see that we do have our dialog here. Here we have the name, here we have the serial. Actually, if you click on one of them, you can see this red arrow telling us that name is 1000 and serial is 1001. So this is indeed the serial and the name is 1000. Now that we confirm this, we can go back in IDA. The first thing we want to do is to rename this as name and this one as serial. So we are going to see what the function working on names. So I'm going to call it function working on name is doing. The first argument is the name. So we have a pointer in ESI to the name. Here we have a move AL bracket ESI. So the first character of the name is moved into AL. We have a test AL AL. If it's zero, we go here. It means that we have a null byte, which basically means that we reach the end of the name. So I'm going to say null byte. Otherwise, we compare first character with uppercase A. It's below. We have no luck there, mate. So the first character must be at least uppercase. And then we compare with Z, uppercase Z. If it's not below, means it's above. Then we call this function. So it means that we have a lowercase and we call this function. And this function is basically subtracting 20 hex from the lowercase and saving the result, basically overwriting the character. So what does it do by subtracting 20? Well, if you look at this, uppercase A equals 41 and lowercase a equals 61, you can see that the difference between a lowercase and a uppercase is basically 20. So this is just converting lowercase to uppercase by subtracting 20 hex, like this. So this is lowercase to uppercase. Then it goes to the next character and keep looping until we have a null byte, which means that we reach the end of the name. Once we reach the end of the name, we are going to come here, pop ESI. Just before we have a push ESI, which is pushing the start of the name onto the stack and popping it back in ESI. So ESI start of uppercase name. At this point, we have a call right here. So what it does is XOR EDI EDI. So EBX, EBX, then we have a move BLESI to the first character. Again, test if we have a null byte. And EDI being zero at that point, EBX is the ASCII value of the first character. We have an addition of this first character to zero, incrementation of ESI, which means going to the next character, getting the ASCII value of the second character and adding it to the previous one. So this is basically doing this for all these characters. And this is an ASCII sum. You can rename it to ASCII sum name. Very simple loop, getting for each character until null byte is found, getting the ASCII value and additioning it to EDI. EDI is set to zero the first iteration, and you keep looping. 
So EDI equals the ASCII sum. Keep looping, we have a null byte return. At this point, EDI equals the ASCII sum, and we have ASCII sum of the name XOR5678. So here we have ASCII sum name XOR5678 X. Then EDI is moved into EEX and that function return. So here we have push EX. ASCII sum of name XOR5678 hex pushed onto the stack, popped letter for the comparison, and now we have this function working on function working on serial. So now we are working on a function which is responsible for dealing with the serial. The first argument is the serial, so we can rename it. Again, we have a bunch of register zeroed by XOR, and then we have a move ESI serial. So ESI is a pointer to the start of the serial. We have move AL A hex, which is 10. BL get the first character of the serial, which is a string at this point. Look for a null byte. So we look for the end of serial string. And then we have a subtraction of BL with 30 hex. And then a multiplication of EDI with EEX. So at the first iteration, EDI equals zero, EEX equals 10. So this is zero times 10 equals zero, obviously. And then we have add EDI, EBX. And EBX is the result of first character minus 30x. So for example, your serial is one, two, three, four. The first character will be 1, and the hex value of 1 is 31. So 31 minus 30 equals 1. So EDI will be 1 at this point. I'm going to show you this. So serial equals, let's say, 1 and 2. The first iteration you get like this. So BL equals 31, and then you have minus 30. You have BL equal this, then BL equal 0x31 minus 0x30. BL equals 0x1. And then you have add EDI EBX. So first of all, we have this EDI equals EDI times 10 equals 0 in that case on the first iteration. And then we have EDI equals EDI plus EBX which is equal to 0 plus 0x1. So at this point, EDI equals 0x1. Then you have the second iteration. Then we have BL equals 0x32, in the case of the CL being 1 and 2. Then you have BL equals 0x32 minus 0x30 equals 0x2. And then you have EDI equals EDI times 10. In our case, it's 1 times 10 because EDI from the previous iteration is 1. So at this point, EDI equals 0x10. And then we have EDI equals EDI plus EBX equals 10, 0x10 plus 0x2, 2 coming from BL. So EDI equals 0x12. So at this point, it's quite easy to understand what is going on. Here we have a serial input, which is a string. And the output is now the same thing in hex. So this function is basically converting a string, decimal string, into equivalent in hex. Very simple. And it loops for all the character until we have a null byte. One is done, we have a XOR EDI with one, two, three, four. So basically here we have serial in hex, XOR, zero X one, two, three, four. And then we have EDI is moved into EBX and return. So this we can be, we can rename it to convert 
serial convert string serial to hex xor one two three four and then we get back so at this point pop ex brings back this ascii sum of the name so five six seven eight ebx is the converted string serial to hex so one two three four if they match then we have the correct serial so now we have everything we need to solve the crack mean. So to summarize, we have this ASCII sum of the name XOR 5678, XOR the converted serial 1234. So basically, what we need to do first of all is the ASCII sum of the name. So in IDC here, you can actually use ORD to get the ASCII value. For example, if I do like this, I'm going to get 65 in decimal, 41 in hex. If you want to compute, for example, I'm going to compute this ASCII sum for hexorcist. So, E, X, O, R, C, I, S T S T the ASCII sum is 697. So now we want to have a XOR 0x5678 like this. So we get 21,697 in decimal. And this must be equal to the input serial XOR 1234. So basically, to get this input, we just need to XOR with 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have one more XOR. CRX 1, 2, 3, 4. Like this. And we get the serial 18,165. I'm going to try this in the crack me. So here I'm going to put the name Exorcist and the serial that we just calculated. Press OK and we get the great work mate. Now try the next crack me. Next crack me is going to be the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this one and that you learned basic reversing and how to locate algorithm, how to solve them. And I will see you in the next one.